It's wonderful to see everyone. Uh, can you believe it is our 15th day of the Revelation Seminar? Mm. We're in our third week and in the last evening of the presentation for this week. I hope everyone was blessed. I pray that everybody has a wonderful night and that you enjoy every moment of the program. Now we turn over to Sister Juba. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. On behalf of the Berea Seventh-day Adventist Church, and on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Omar Javis and his family, we would like to welcome you to day 15. It's the end of today is the last day of the third week, as my sister rightly um, let you know, informed you a few minutes ago. Um, just to recap what we did this week, we began with Sunday observance, and we spoke about the Sabbath, and I hope that you remember and you are taking notes, as my sister rightly suggested a few minutes ago. Second, we spoke about the two worldwide movements unveiled, and Elder Williams went into depth into that subject. We also spoke about the keys of death, revelation keys of death. And last night, the um, Pastor Walker, he spoke about a, God sets a date for the judgment. The caption was God sets a date for the judgment. And tonight, rightly so, we will end the third week with the caption, Revelation proclaims God's judgment. So please have your notepads ready to take any to place your questions or write down anything that you think you need to remember to share with others. We do not want you to keep this information to yourself. As much as you may enjoy the seminar, this is for your spiritual growth. At the end of the day, we need to remember why we are doing this. So please. Be ready to receive a blessing this evening. It's over to you now, my dear sister, Sister Campbell. Okay, at this time, we'll just move right into the health nugget with by Michael. Thank you, everyone, for joining again today. Um, we will be continuing with what we've been talking about so far, about how intemperance um, hinders our spiritual growth. Um, we talked about before about how uh, the brain is the only medium through which heaven is able to communicate with us. So anything that we do, we eat or ingest that uh, prevents that from happening uh, through Christ Jesus, let's let go of it. Um, today we'll be talking about caffeine, caffeine and how it affects the brain. Uh, it benumbs the brain, it injures it, irritates it, and causes paralysis of mental powers. Now let's go a little bit into death. Um, what is caffeine in itself? Now it's a central nervous system stimulant. Uh, central nervous, that's the brain and the spinal cord. I have a picture over here just to show what I'm specifically referring to. And it's a stimulant. It's the most widely consumed psych psychoactive drug. It's actually termed or given the name a drug. That is a, a psychoactive meaning affecting the mind. Now, the sources of caffeine is some teas. Some teas, because it's not all teas. Um, chamomile tea is good. Peppermint tea is good. And there are many other teas that are good. Uh, if once you're buying tea, just read uh, the label. Uh, and you should find if it has caffeine, usually it tells you that it has caffeine. If you're not sure, you can always Google it on your phone. Also, we have coffee, and then we have the cacao plants. Um, that's, the, that's a picture of it right there from the cocoa pod. So that's the seed, and this is used to make chocolate. Also, there's soft drinks, or some soft drinks. Now, these are the effects of excessive intake of um, caffeine. That is insomnia, headaches, anxiety, irritability, depression, cardiac palpitations, anorexia, convulsions, heart failure, and the list actually goes on. Now, a study was done on animals concerning their intake of um, caffeine, 
and it was noticed that it influenced their learning, their memory, their motor performance, that is referring to the, our balance and coordination, our sensory function, that is the, our senses, and then emotional reactivity, that is uh, you tend to be overreactive in some cases. Now, caffeine, this is taken from um, Councils on Diet and Foods, page 430, and it can also be found in Temperance, page 79. So tea and coffee should never actually be used. They are narcotics. It's interesting how the Spirit of Prophecy terms it narcotics, injurious alike to the brain and to the other organs of the body. The drunkard sells his reason for a cup of poison Satan takes control of his reason, affections, conscience. Such a man is destroying the temple of God. Tea drinking, again referring to tea containing caffeine, tea drinking helps to do this same work. Yet how many there are who place these destroying agencies on their tables, thereby quenching the divine attributes. It is, it is my purpose that um, as we draw closer and closer to the time where we will lift up our heads and say, here is our savior, that we will neglect or remove all these things from our life so that we can proper prepare ourselves for the change of character that Christ wants to see in us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Michael, for that presentation. Brother Williams, it's all yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it's... Uh, a great privilege to be here with you this evening. On behalf of Pastor Omar Jarvis and his family, along with the Board of Elders of the Berea Seventh-day Adventist Church, I welcome you here this evening. Again, we are happy that you have come and uh, your presence being here on the platform testifies of God's goodness. You have made the choice to be here, and God has a blessing in store for you, and he will not disappoint you. Tonight's lesson of the series is Revelation Proclaim God's Judgment. We are in judgment time now. Uh, that is what we have come down to, the book of Revelation, the end time message. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, and we praise you because you're a God worthy of all praise. I ask you for forgiveness and for cleansing and that there will be no hindrance uh, that this prayer would not come before your presence tonight. Uh, please remove them and anything that is unlike you. And as a prayer come, may it ascend the sweet incense, burning of the evening altar of sacrifice, and in turn, may your blessing come down upon us. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Bless this meeting in a very special way. And that when we should have been finished, we could say, thank God that we were here. We ask all these mercies again with the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, Sister Doman, with the blessing of the Lord, could you give us the caption on the lesson, please? In the last lesson, we discovered that the judgment has already begun in heaven. The word judgment fills the mind with questions. Who will be judged? How is evidence gathered? Must I defend myself with my stammering mouth or does heaven provide legal help? Who decides Satan's sentence? Why does God need a judgment anyway? Doesn't he already know everything about everyone? Do I have even the slightest chance of being pronounced innocent in the judgment in light of my conduct? The judgment is such a crucial part of God's great plan that some claim the scriptures mention it 1,000 times. Revelation says it, mo it most loudly. However, may the spirit impress as we study this vital topic. Thank you very much, Sister Dorman. And the, tonight we have exhibit that we'll be presenting along with the scriptures to make the lesson plain, to give you the proper understanding. We do not want to live, leave you uh, hanging in any way. So uh, we are not 
going to do, uh, leave a, a job undone. We are going to do what God has called us to do tonight. Uh, your, your trial before God. Uh, this is a very serious thought to know that we stand in, in front of the, the God of the universe uh, to, for a trial. Now, let us see what uh, the lesson has to say as we move into this, this very special lesson. According to scripture, who will face heavenly judgment? Uh, there is an answer for that. And as a Bible believing people, we'll go to the Bible for our answer. Sister Williams, could you tell us what the Bible says, please? Yes. And it reads, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. The Bible speaks of judgment. This is not made up. And the Bible speaks of it. And that is what God has placed there in his word. And today we, it is being revealed to us just a little more. It's being emphasized. According to our last lesson, when did the judgment begin in heaven? The Bible has an answer for that. Could you tell us, Sister Williams? And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And I believe, and if the scripture said that, there's a note that explained that also, Sister Dorman. The judgment began in 1844. Jesus then entered the most holy place of the sanctuary to begin the heavenly day of atonement. Revelation 11 verse 19. Fits the same time period. It also speaks of the judgment beginning in heaven. Many of us have our Bibles on our, our, our uh, cabinets uh, in, and, and so at some place. Uh, some of them are there just collecting dust. But this is the greatest history book you can think of. And the Bible is speaking about God's judgment. Judgment. In 1844, the Bible says the judgment begins in heaven. How do we know that? The Bible will explain who are the judges according to Psalms 50 and verse 6 and also John 5 and verse 22. Somebody's judging if there's a judgment. Just Williams, what does the Bible say? And it reads, and the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Mercy. The God of heaven, the God who winks and the thunder rolls, the lightning flash, the God who spoke and things came into being, he will be the judgment, Sister Dorman. Though God presides at the judgment, he has turned over the leading role to his son. How exciting to have our best and truest friends as our judge. My friends, it is a good thought to know that the one who you confess to, the one who make, be, are your friend, the one who died for you, he will be the judgment. The judge, the father had committed the judgment to the son. Uh, that seems like good news for the Christian. Good news for the Christian. And we look forward to that time. What attitude do the father and the son have towards us? First Timothy chapter two, verse three and four. Also John 16 and verse 27. Sister Williams, could you explain from the Bible, please? For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For the Father himself loveth you, because he hath loved me, and hath believed that I came out from God. Knowing that we came out from God. The thing is, my friend, if you're going to a court of law, you know you have a good lawyer, then you're depending on that lawyer. You're looking for him to speak for you, and to speak to the court in the language that the court wants to hear. This time, Jesus will be our lawyer, the one that we pray to, the one who came and died for us. There are three phases of the judgment. Let's review them carefully. Phase one is called the pre-advent or the pre-advent judgment. What is the pre-advent judgment and how does it start? Our savior 
who have all uh, spent his life and uh, uh, died for us on the tree uh, and on Calvary. He is a part of what is happening. He himself is a part of that judgment. And so therefore, as we move into phase one of the judgment, we want to know who stands there. And it said the judgment must begin at uh, the house of God. The judgment must begin at uh, the house of God. It is a frightening thing to know if we have to go to court and we did not prepare for the judgment. And so that tell us that we must prepare. The life in which we live is preparation time, not just to live and to enjoy, but we need to be prepared to meet our king. Who will face God in the judge? In the, who will face God in the first phase of the judgment that is now taking place in heaven? Who will face God? First Peter 4 and verse 17, please. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Even God's people who call themselves God's people will be judged. Can you think, imagine therefore, what it will be for those who are not? Sister Doman, could you give us a note, please? The house of God is his church. First Timothy 3 verse 15. The judgment now in progress centers on those who claim to be Jesus' servants. The wicked are not judged in the first phase. The phase of the judgment will clearly reveal which believers are false and which are true. The thing is, my friend, God uh, knows that we could not live without uh, uh, the temptation because the tempter came. He chose to come where man kind is because man is created in the image of God and therefore if he had a falling out and he blamed God then therefore he wanted to get even with God so what he does he came to earth where man is trying to break down man to cause a man to sin and therefore he would be believed that he would have damaged the image of God what will be considered in the judgment is there the judgment? What is it? How do I prepare for that? Let us find out what Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14 tells us. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be easy. Sister Dorman, the note on the six, please. It seems incredibly, incredibly, but our judge is also our attorney. Praise God. And the Bible is clear. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. That, he is, that he is merciful and faithful. What superb traits for our attorney. Mm. He who gave his life for us now serves as attorney to present us in heaven. Amen. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret sin. Sometimes we do some 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 nasty thing uh, to to people to and even to ourselves. And we think more or less that that is it. God has given us the body. And don't you know that he, God, lives in us in a, in a spiritual way? And that is the one that gives us the directive to do what is right. And, and when we abuse the body, and if we do not take care of the body, that Holy Spirit that should dwell within just cannot tabernacle. And therefore, we need to be careful of what we do with our bodies. What will God use as his standard of measures, a measurement in the judgment, according to James chapter 2, verse 10 and 12. What will God use as a measure? For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and do so as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Mm. 
the law of liberty is the Ten Commandments. That, that is where we'll be judged from. And my friends, uh, uh, what we're doing tonight and what we have started uh, since uh, we, we began this seminar is to remind you, remind some of us, right? Because some of us are familiar with that. There are those who might not, but our responsibility is to bring to you this good news of salvation. Because if we don't, then you'd be ignorant of the fact but the God has, uh, has placed us in this position that will give the good news that we all can warn the people of the impending doom. Judgment is coming and judgment will fall upon, upon everyone. Everyone will be judged. The note on the eight, please. The Ten Commandments are God's standard in the judgment. Exhibit number one for lesson 11 points out that the law is God's character described in words. Now here we see it said angels keep records of our lives. It is important because if when the devil was booted out of heaven, uh, Lucifer uh, uh, became the devil, the dragon, all these names. When he was booted out of heaven, he felt at that time that God was unjust because he, whatever God did to him, it, 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 it is wrong. And so therefore he's bent and proving God wrong. So God knew what would have happened and therefore he caused the, the angels to bear record it is necessary. And if there is going to be a court, then record of to be produced. And therefore, we want to know who bears this record. Where does God keep the record of my life? How does someone will see whether or not I have lived a life that is just and fair according to God's direction? Did I depend upon Jesus Christ to help me? And it, how uh, would someone know that what I did was 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 good, we, we and uh, or what I did was bad, whether or not I was living a double life, and that is according to Revelation twenty and verse twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So there are evidences that are kept. In the court of law is I see, I saw, I heard. Uh, it, you, you cannot go and say, and say I believe. Uh, you must have proof. So here we said the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books. Not just a book, but in the books. My friend, we need to be careful because the notes are, are being kept, the record rather, are being kept. Sister Dorman? Though Revelation 20 verse 12 refers to the third phase of the judgment, the books will be testimony also for the first phase of the judgment. Daniel 7 verse 10, the records are accurate and complete. They include even thoughts and motives. The court is fair. Mm. I need not be there. The books will speak for me. All right. Uh, Sister Levy, uh, exhibit one, please. Um, exhibit one says, heaven's books of record. The scripture mentions the book of life and the book of remembrance. The scripture tells us um, the following regarding the book of life. Number one, the faithful have their book their names in the book of life, Revelation 13 and verse 8. Number two, one's name can be removed from the book, mm. Revelation 22, verse 19. Three, the names of the wicked are not recorded in the book of life, Revelation 17, verse 8. Number four, the overcomer's name will not be blotted out of the book, Revelation 3, verse 5. Number five, those with their names in the book of life will enter the holy city. Revelation 21, verse 27. Six, the book of life is used in the judgment. Revelation 20, verse 12. Seven, if a person's name is not in the book, he will be cast into the lake of fire. 
Revelation 20, verse 15. Number eight, all who are written in the book will be delivered. Daniel 12, verse one. Number nine, Christians can rejoice that their names are in the book of life now. Luke 10, verse 20. 11, faithful church members' names in the books now. Hebrew 12, verse 23. 12, if, a, if persons turn back to a life of sin, his name will be blotted out of the book. Exodus 32, 33. 13, the righteous are included in the book. Psalm 69, 28. 14, the book of life records names of faithful workers. Philippians, 3, Philippians 4 and verse 3. Now let's see what the scripture comments um, on the book of remembrance. Number one, it records Christian testimonies and witnessing. Malachi 3 and verse 16. Number two, it contains a record of our good deeds. Nehemiah 13 and verse 14. And the note says, salvation is a free gift of God. It is based upon the works of Jesus alone. John 1, 29, John 3, 16, and John 4, 24. Our works do give evidence of our connection with Jesus. However, so the Lord looks at them. James 2 and verse 26 tells us, faith without works is dead. The book of Revelation says clearly four times that we will be judged by our works. Revelation 2 and verse 23, Revelation 20, verse 12, Revelation 20, verse 13, and Revelation 22, verse 12. Also, also, Christ repeatedly said to the seven churches, I know thy works. Works do indeed say something about the depth of one's experience with Jesus. No Christian experience can be genuine without them. Number three, it records our tears. Psalm 56 and verse eight. And finally, number four, even secret things are recorded in the book of remembrance. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Mercy. So who presents the case against us? Uh, now we, we have here evidence. We have directive that we need that is showing us and telling us that this this is no joke. Uh, when we said there will be a court, when we said that the, a case will be brought against individual, we are saying yes, we have the evidence, and the books show us that there are evidence. We didn't make up the story. This is coming from the Bible. Now, who presents the case against us according to Zechariah three verses one and two? And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebu rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? So Satan is a, the, the accuser. He, 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 he knows what he has led us into, what sinful act he has led us into. So he, he is the attorney that is speaking against us, while Jesus is the attorney that will defend us. And that is uh, good news for the Christian. Sister Dorman. Satan, the old <laughs> accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12, verse 10 who disputed with Michael regarding the body of Moses, mm. Jude 9, and who made wild accusation against Job. Job chapters 1 and 2 is the enemy who accuses us. My friends, this is no joke. This is life and this is death. And he's telling us that we have to guard our, our life 
We have to guard our lives, and we can only do that through the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He stands willing to forgive us. His heirs are listening. He said, he wait patiently for us. Remember his promise, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And John tells us that, my little children, sin not. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father. Who is that? Jesus Christ, the righteous while uh, the, the present judgment is going on in heaven. What does Revelation predict will be happening on earth? Revelation 11, verse 18 and 19. Please, Sister Williams. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servant, the prophet, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and should it destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of the God, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament mm. were light that were lightning and voices and thundering, and an earthquake and great hail. Amen. You know, somebody asked a question, I think two nights ago, if there will be the Ark of the Covenant, where will it be? And we said, yes, all that was in the heavenly sanctuary. Moses was told to build the earthly sanctuary likewise. Now, my friend, uh, Sister Dorman, please. True, true. Indeed, the nations are angry. And with pollution, trash, and devastating weapons, people are destroying the earth. And not just the earth, people are destroying one another. People are angry about the things that is that's happening around us. We're talking about COVID and all these things. Things have, have reached to a point where uh, men are getting ready to destroy themselves on the earth. And that is why God says he will cut it short in righteousness. It does not mean that the days are going to be shorter, but it means the time. And the, 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 the days or the time in which all this will be in rapid succession. March of this year, April of this year, everything was going well. The economy was good. Everything was moving tip top, uh, uh, looking so good. Then all of a sudden, between March now, our world has changed. Our world has changed. Look on the difference of the way things are now for what it was in March, the beginning of March of this year. We're all wearing uh, masks. We're wearing gloves. We, 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 it, when you go to this, the, the market, the price of things is so high. Things have changed. I even go into the, 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 super, the, the, uh, the stores, you cannot f even find computers. They're jumping off the shelf and the price had tripled, quadrupled some of them. Things has changed. We're getting into, into judgment time. We're getting into God's time. And it is telling the unchurch that is now it's time to do something because Jesus Christ is coming soon. We need to make our calling and election sure. There is no time to play around, right? Does God need books and a judgment? are a court of trial to find out about me and my conduct or does he know everything about me already god knows because we know and that's why we said that god is omnipotent he's all powerful he's omniscient right he's, he, he has everything going because god is god he knows and, and so therefore he doesn't need uh books but a, a people, uh, the saints, the, 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 the angels will want to know uh, how is it that God do the things that he did or will do. It simply means the record will be for those of us and the angels who do not understand the plan of salvation. Let us hear what Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19 tells us. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Do no iniquity. And you know iniquity is when you actually just look on something that you know it is wrong, it is evil, you're 
plan it, and, and, and then you go on and do it anyway. That is iniquity. You planned it within your heart. You did not just fall into sin. You plan the whole evil that is to be done, and you do it. The Bible says, stay away from iniquity. And the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Redeemer, our friend, he is the one that keeps us and can keep us from sin and iniquity. Sister Dorman, please. God is omniscient, but the angels are not. The present judgment will permit them to be completely examine all evidence and be fully satisfied regarding God's justice. God does not announce the decision until the angels are clear that all people have made up their minds about God and Satan. There will be no more change in sides. Revelation 22 and verse 11 and 12. It is not a decree, but an announcement. All have made final, this final choices. More probationary time would change nothing. God knows. That's why he's, he's omniscient. He knows all things. It didn't make sense give you more probation time. It would not change anything, right? Because even some of us are alive. Our probation uh, has already been sealed with God. He knows. Right, so therefore, it, 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 that it's not necessary, or if he even give us more time that to make more choice, our choice has already been made. He knows what our choice will be, right? Because he's all knowing, he's omniscient, he knows our mind, he knows what is there, even more than we ourselves know about ourselves. God knows. So when time is uh, when the time comes, and when you say it is done, he knows it is done. Because if he allow man to go beyond the point that he says it is done, then man would have destroyed himself. Phase number two, judgment during the 1,000 years. We spoke about the 1,000 years. We spoke about the millennium. We, talk, we spoke about the first resurrection. Now let us see the phase two judgment during the 1,000 years. If books are kept, then it got to be for a reason. Somebody has to see the books. And therefore, as we trot along, we want to see who should. Is it necessary? Uh, it said, since the present judgment, which is now in session, according to Daniel 7 and 9, 7, sorry, 9 and 10, is not needed by God personally for whose benefit then uh, these, these, these books are kept. What is the purpose of it? Sister Williams, could you tell us what Revelation says? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. God is standing up. Jesus is standing up for us, right? When we stand before God, I, I, I like to, to paint a picture. And can you imagine that when, when you have done an act of sinfulness and there's no hope uh, uh, for you, then you, you find within your heart when the Holy Spirit prick your mind and tell you that you have done wrong and you then said, I, 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 I become justified by saying, I confess my sin to you. And Jesus then cover us with his robe of righteousness. And we stand before the Father. There we are sinless because we stand in the front of a just God covered with the righteousness of his son. What a mighty God that he could make such uh, pre uh, preparation for us because he knew that man would have sinned. He knew that when he placed Adam in the garden of Eden, that Adam would have sinned. He knew that, but he, and so because of that, he has a point of escape. There was a way in which was, was there for man. Uh, and, and, and so therefore Jesus Christ would come to die for us. When will the wicked be judged? Revelation 20 and verse four, when will the wicked be judged? And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, 
and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So why? My friends, the note says that the saints shall judge the world. We shall judge the angels. Can you imagine that? Let me, let me paint a picture here for you. If we're judging and we will be judging angels, because I, 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 I want to be there, and I'm trying to live a life sanctified, glorified, by, fulfilled through Christ's mercy, and I'll be there. And if I am going to be in judging angels, how is it that we cannot settle simple things here even among ourselves? We go even into our churches. Uh, therefore, how could a church member take another church member to court? How should we do that? Because the Bible said that the righteous will judge angels. And the angels are made a little higher than human beings. And if we'll be judging angels, that means we should be able to take care of our business among ourselves because we are God's people. That is very important. Very important to know that that need to be done. In your opinion, for whose benefit is the judgment of the wicked conducted? After all, people who are not in heaven during the 1,000 years are lost anyway. So why conduct the judgment for the wicked? Is it necessary? Why conduct the judgment for the wicked? That is to what? God's character will be vindicated. In heaven, when the, 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 the Lucifer was so influential in heaven that he could have incited and instigated a third of the angelic host to agree with him by saying that God was unjust, right? And he did that. And so those angels who was booted off the heaven along with Lucifer still believe that God is unjust. Therefore, God has to vindicate his name. And because of that, he keep record. You see that records are kept. That the angels and the saints will be able to see that what he did was right. And so, therefore, his name can be clear. Because God is God. And he wants to remain a, a God who is just. And who looks out for his people. My friend, if we follow the direction has given to us by God, we will do the right thing. We'll end up where we should be. And that is when the, the, the songwriter said, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And another songwriter said, uh, there come a day, by and by, when the morning come, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we'll tell the story, how we overcome, because we will understand it better by and by. By and by, my friend, by and by, the time will come when God will do what God does best, and that is vindicate his name. Sister Dorman, could you do the note on the 16, please? This judgment is for the benefit of the righteous. Many will be lost whom the righteous thought, um, thought Christians. Looking at the records and asking questions will remove all doubt as to God's fairness. It will be seen that those who are, who are lost chose to ignore God in spite of myriads of loving appeals from his throne. Amen. Myriads of direction. Time after time, uh, warning have gone. But what? They, they, they neglect to answer. They choose to ignore. And remember we said that man's, uh, in order for a man to be saved, it is dependent upon his choice because God has made us free moral agent, but he has endowed us with knowledge and understanding that we can differentiate between we know what is wrong from what is right. And God has already said to us, choose life and live. So therefore, a man who is lost or those who will be lost is dependent upon the choice that they make. And therefore, God said to Jesus Christ, we should choose life. Why will you die, O oh man? Why will you die? My friend, God 
will have judgment. And the judgment is not for himself. It's not for God the Father. It's not for God the Son. It is not God for the Holy Spirit. It is that for the angels who have fallen and for the saints, we will be able to see all those who are saved in God's kingdom, that the record are kept, that those names were recorded in the book of life and they remain in the book of life. Now we are going to look on phase three of the judgment. Phase three, judgment at close of 1,000 years. We have looked on before. Now we want to see what happened after. It said Matthew chapter 25 to 31. Uh, 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 pictures a third phase of the judgment when both righteous and the wicked stand before God alive for receiving the reward or punishment. In your opinion, hey, does the judgment occur at, at Jesus' second coming or at the end of the 1,000 years? B, or for the benefit fit of this phase of the judgment uh, conducted. What is God doing at the, at the end of the 1,000 year or after the holy city descend on the earth? Why, how do we find out and what does the Bible said and how, how do we get the understanding? We are doing that in this phase of the lesson. And now let us look on the three phases of judgment. Let me move this little doohickey out of my way. Number one, who judge? It said for number one is God and the angels. All right. Uh, then then we, we said so one and two, it's uh, God and the righteous and God, angels, and the righteous. That is one phase. God and the angels, then God and the righteous, then God and the angels and the righteous. Phase two, uh, we said phase two, where it was conducted. He said in heaven. Phase two, it, the judgment is done in heaven. All right, now uh, look and faith street conducted in heaven. We're looking on all three phases, and then on earth, and then on earth. Because remember, the new Jerusalem is coming back with God's people. The third uh, three, for whose benefit now? For whose benefit? Number, it said three for the angels, three for the righteous, then three for the wicked, for Satan and the evil angels. Uh, three phases, because here, where the God will bring fire and brimstone out of heaven to consume them, all right? In a phase where the righteous uh, are, are, will be taken up at that first resurrection will be in heaven, looking over the books. Now before the, the righteous get there, God and his angels are, are seeing and know what is happening in the book. My friends, these are serious times in which we are living. And we, I do hope that as we make presentations like these, they do not, we don't, do not just leave them hanging. When we study these things, they are serious things, and we should make sure that our calling an election is sure, right? The second coming of Christ, we talk about 1844, all right? We talk about phase one. We talk about the 1,000 years, which is the millennium. All this, God is at work, right? One time he's in, in heaven, then he comes to earth, and then he goes back, and then he comes with the righteous. My friends, I want us to make sure that we are a part of uh, uh, the good side of the judgment, because uh, we do not want to be where the wicked are. We want to be in the holy city that defend, that descend from God out of heaven. When John described it as beautiful and prepared as a dawn to meet her husband, that is a new Jerusalem. It simply means the saints along with God and the angels were in the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. It will come and so it will come twice. It is going to come at the first resurrection. Because you got your, your I'm, I'm sorry, at the first resurrection, we will, will all be taken up and we go to heaven. 
my friend, are the second that, that, that will be coming back in the New Jerusalem, which will become the capital of the earth made new. These are serious times, my friend. What we're showing here and what we're talking about is no play. It's no game. This is what you call life and death. This is what you call life and death. We need to do something, do the right thing, right? The next question, therefore, is when God announces rewards and punishment in the judgment, is he making the decision at the moment or simply permitting angels and righteous to confirm what he has already known? Let us see what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, and Romans 2 and verse 5, also 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 5. Sister Williams, tell us what the Bible says, please. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, and thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Mm. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring the light and the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. Hmm. And, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Mercy. Mercy. Sister Dorman, could you give me the note on the 17, please? It, take, it takes place at the close of the 1,000 years because that is the only time in Earth's history when all who have ever lived will be alive for a mm. short time, either inside or outside the holy city. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. This judgment convinces the wicked, including Satan and his angels, who will at this time have questioned and answered and will mm. finally see that God is loving, kind, just, and fair. God never pulls rank on his enemies or orders them to be silent. He simply presents clear cut evidence, which is too plain to question. Those who think that God will never punish or destroy people would do well to consider the fact that God did indeed do so at the time of the flood and at the destruction of Sodom. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Sister Levy, could you give me uh, the exhibit one, two, three, and four, please? Number one, the judgment began in 1844 and will not close till after the thousand years of Revelation 20. Number two, its purpose is not to inform God of anything he is fully aware of everything about everyone Mercy. and could handle the entire judgment in a microsecond. 1 Kings 8, verse 39. Number three, its purpose is to make very clear to angels and people that Satan's plan was hopeless, unworkable, and diabolical. That God has handled everything with utmost courtesy, compassion, fairness and love and that every single person actually received as a reward or punishment what he chose of his own free will mm. after being fully informed of the consequences and finally number four the watching universe must be clear that it is safe to welcome beings who have sinned back into heaven's family the judgment makes that clear by presenting the evidence which the angels have gathered and by answering questions from inquirers. Amen. God is not playing. God, and as we said, this is life and death. And therefore, we need to be warned. 
of the impending doom. Because uh, just as the, the note says that, uh, do not consider that God will not destroy uh, because there's a loving God. He destroys Sodom and there was also a flood uh, of destruction. So therefore God's people need to heed the warning because what God says, he means it. He says it and that settles it for me. You see, we call it an assurance of salvation is now. The assurance of salvation is now. And do not play game with God. God does not play game. God is serious. Remember, we're talking about life and death here. And we want to make sure that we do what is right and what is pleasing in the eyes of God. Now, let us move on. As we go down. Now, since I must yet face God in judgment, can I have assurance of salvation now? That's a question. Let us see what Daniel chapter 7, verse 22, and Isaiah chapter 3, and verse 10 says about that. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came, and the saints possessed the kingdom. Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Mm. You know, Sister Dorman, give me the note on the 18, please. The redeemed in heaven clearly give the reason why all consider God just and true. His judgments are made manifest, or as the New English Bible says, they just by just dealing stand revealed. God knew all along where every person stood. He already, in fact, has the names of the saved in the book of life. Revelation 13, verse 8. Revelation 17 and verse 8. But in order to solve the problem of rebellion and sin, he patiently waits till men and angels, both good and evil, see what he has long seen. The truth about every being will be revealed in the judgment. It will be too plain for any to, to debate. Mm. Isaiah 3, verse 10 and 11. And on the 19? God has promised to pronounce fair, favorably sentence on all people who love and truly follow him. He calls them saints. And if he you do 20... You do it on the 20, please. God will not accept a cover-up. All mm. records of sins remain on the books till the very end. So all will have access to the records at all times. Nothing will be swept under the rug. God promised to restore his image in his people through the ministry of his son in the heavenly sanctuary. The records will only demonstrate to all observers that God has worked the miracles to make it so. His people have become like him. Amen. Sister Levy, give me the exhibit number three, please. Exhibit number three, assurance of salvation. Jesus has given us many precious promises in his word. The Bible says that claiming these promises by faith makes us partakers of the divine nature now. Second Peter 1 verse 4. It is impossible to believe these magnificent promises and not have assurance now. That is why Jesus gave them to us. Following is a list of 20 blessed promises. These are more, there are more just as clear. And it, it, it lists like 20 promises here. I'm going to go through them quickly. Number one, he will keep you from falling. Number two, judgment will be given to or in favor of the saints. Three, the, he leads you in paths of righteousness. Four, he gives you victory now. Five, he which started a good work in you will complete it. Four, Jesus is your attorney. Seven, the Father also loves you. Eight, he promises forgiveness and cleansing from sin daily. Nine, he forgets your sin and iniquity. 10. Jesus assures you and asks that you be bold. 
11, he promises to confess you before his angels. 12, overcoming is promised by his blood. 13, he offers you the wedding garment, his righteousness for free. 14, no one can take you out of his hand. 15, if you believe on him, he cannot, you cannot be condemned. Mm. 16, he always causes you to triumph. 17, Jesus does the miracle working needed in us. In us. 18, with him, everything is possible for mm. us. 19, he promises to take our worries. And number 20, if I am willing to follow him, he accepts me as I am. It is Amen. wonderful news that Jesus keeps his word, Titus 1 verse 2. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. Mm. He promises assurance. Accept it and it is yours. He will make a way. Amen. He will make a way. Uh, sins, uh, so sins are forgotten when we confess them. When we, when, when are they blotted out of God's record? Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, Sister Williams. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before you, before was preached unto you. What did the heavenly beings say the church must do after the bitter disappointment at Revelation 10, 11, please. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. In harmony with what the angel told John in Revelation 10, what must God's church be preaching today as part of the everlasting God, gospel. Revelation 14, six and seven, please. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Uh, Sister Doman, could you do the note on the 22, please? The church does not have a right to preach anything it wishes, it wishes and call it the everlasting gospel. Hmm. God mandates that the church must include in the gospel the wonderful truth that the judgment is now in session in heaven. Note also that the angel calls it the hour of his judgment. Men must decide how they will relate to Satan's accusation against God. So the judgment actually, in a sense, it includes a decision about God. He has put himself and his character on trial. The church's work today is to let the world know the truth about the beautiful character of a loving God. That is why we are holding meetings like these. Our responsibility as a church is to proclaim the glad tidings, glad tidings of great joy. Just like in the beginning, when the uh, wise men came and said that Jesus would be born, it was necessary that the world know that the, the Messiah would be born because he should come to help people and to deliver people from sinful life, uh, to show them how to live. And he came and he lived on earth. And uh, there he demonstrated to us what life is all about, what humans can do. God, Jesus in human form, uh, living in a human body, lived a life uh, uh, that, that demonstrates to mankind that man can live above sin. And the Bible said, if we fall into sin, then we have him have an, as an advocate who will stand up for us. And that is why we're talking about going to court, going to judgment. When the judgment is set and the books are open and their God, the Father, uh, turn over judgment to the Son, Jesus Christ. And he, when he speaks, he, he know us. He know what we've already done. He know those who have repented and confessed their sins. And therefore, he will be able to say, 
to us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. The God we serve is a just God. He's a knowledgeable God. He knows everything. And therefore, he will put things in its proper perspective. In harmony with what the angel told John in Revelation 10, what must God's church be preaching today as part of the everlasting gospel? Well, let's talk about one part. What is another part that, according to Revelation 14, 6, and 7? And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. That have to be reiterated because that must be presented. It's a time now. Like we, we as a people, uh, Daniel 8, 14, tell us that unto 2,000, 300 years, then shall his sanctuary be cleansed. And therefore, as a people, that has become our memory verse. That has become our way of life because we know that the, the, the sanctuary will be cleansed and that is what we move towards. And so it is when we, re, we, we read a text like that telling you that this gospel must be presented at this time because it is end time. The time is coming when God will say it is finished. And that means if it is finished, all is over. All right. Uh, judgment is now taking it, it, its course. Mercy, mercy is gone. Uh, and judgment here now. And, 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 and grace, we are moving into the, the kingdom of grace. According to Revelation, uh, uh, the Revelation repeatedly, repeat, Revelation repeatedly points out that both men and angels will will excitedly and loudly uh, praise and thank God for the justice. Uh, words cannot even, and satisfaction uh, of the judgment. What specifically are they saying? They're excited. They're talking about the judgment. They're talking about justice. What are men really saying in the book of Revelation? Remember, we are in Revelation time. Revelation 16, verse 7. Revelation 19, verse 2. Revelation 15, and verse 3. What are men really saying, Sister Williams? And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgment. For true and righteous are his judgment. For he that judgeth the whole whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Mm. Who shall mm. not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for may all nations shall come and worship before thee, for the judgments are made manifest. Mm. All, all nations will come before him. What finally does everyone in the universe do to express their feelings about God's fairness and love? Philippians chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should mm. bow, or things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Sister Doman, give me a note, please, on the 24. All who have ever lived face God at the close of the 1,000 years. No one is putting on, no one is forced. It is finally so clear that all in heaven and earth, including Satan and his angels, bow to confess that Jesus is fully just and that every person has received what he himself chose. The lost are shown to be lost because they, they preferred the lifestyle of the evil one. 
Heaven would be torture to them. It would be unfair to include them. Mm. And the righteous are shown to be like Jesus. Not even Satan doubted Jesus' forgiveness, but the evil one doubted that God could indeed restore men to his image. The redeemed stand before him as proof it has happened. No question will ever be raised again about the handling of the sin problem and the character of God. They have all been answered. My friend, the time is here. The time is now when we must make decision for or against the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, my son, my daughter, give me thine heart. That is what he's asking for. Let us hear what Proverbs 23 and verse 26 says about that. Before he said, he want to enter uh, your heart, your name in his book of life and keep it there. Uh, will you let him enjoy that? Let us hear what Proverbs 23 and verse 6 says. My son, give me thine ear and let thine eyes observe my ways. Family, Jesus Christ died hanging on a cross. That was for you and for me. Will you give him your heart today? It is that important. This is life and death. This is life after death or life everlasting. Right? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed because some will be changed. All right? So we talk about life or life and death or life. My friend, will you give God your life today if you have not yet done so? It is that necessary because you want to live again and to live with him eternally. All right, the quiz for tonight, and they are true or false. We go ahead now. Number one, there are few special people who will not have to face the judgment. That is, a, is that true or false? Number two, the judgment began in heaven in 1844 and will end at the conclusion of the 1,000 year period of Revelation 20. Number three, the judgment begins with professing Christians. Number four, God has promised to give favorable decision to those who love him and truly follow him. Five, there will never be a time that everybody agrees that God is just. All right, I want to say thanks for everyone for participating in the quiz and uh, just for being here. But I want to ask the question now, and it is simple, this. If you see clearly that everyone will be judged by God, then tonight you need to make a decision that you will accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you see that the judgment is going on now, right? Right now, the judgment is going on for your life and for my life. Again, it is very important that you make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this I say, if you want to be one of those who love him and truly follow him so that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life and you want to thank him for giving you eternal life, go back to the same thing, accept him tonight as your Lord and Savior. The time is now. Sunday night's lesson will be number 16, the land of beginning again. Let us bow our head for prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, and we praise much this name for your great love and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we have spent here tonight. 
we do hope and pray, Lord, that what has been presented, that someone would have reached to a point and make a decision to accept you as the God of their lives, that they can be a part of that judgment when it comes that Jesus Christ will stand up for them and their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us a good night's rest, that we have pleasant dreams and uh, everything will go well. God, the place where we sleep, protect us from the hands of wicked men and evil angels. Help us, Lord, to remain faithful. Uh, provide for us all the necessities of life. Bless this team in a very special way. And then when it shall come, save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.